there welcome back if you're a seasoned subscriber and welcome if you're new to the channel and today we're going to do a review of my two Coco Crush ring right here so pretty much I'm gonna go into the detail of the ring and then we'll go into the wear and tear of the ring because I had this ring I think about I'm only approximating over a year now I don't know the exact month because I don't remember people <laughs> <laughs> it's like groundhog days <laughs> these days I just don't remember so of course when I'm editing the video I'm gonna go and make sure the information is most accurate as, as far as I know so it's almost one month to one year since the day I purchased the ring yes yeah, so I bought these a few months apart but as you can see they're This one is in white gold and has the diamonds here and it's palladium plated. This is the Chanel's beige gold which is patent for Chanel. So, so Chanel's beige gold is equivalent to rose gold but it's more of a yellowish tone than versus you know a VCA bracelet per se. VCA or even Cartier right here. You compare it's Right here you can see the difference. Zoom, I'll zoom in when I edit. I also did another video previously to this one where I went into the you know the details of it. And I'll so just in case if you're new to the Chanel Coco Crush line, this is called the Coco Crush ring. So the quilted pattern that you see in the ring, if you look at it, it is one of the basic iconic symbolism of Chanel. So the quilted pattern here is called the quilted motif. This is the small version in terms of the ring size and it is made of 18 white carat gold and it has 31 brilliant cut diamonds totaling 0.18 carats. The interior of the ring has white gold but it has a thin layer of palladium plating on top of it to give it its color. And in terms of metal color, the white gold is more of a lighter silver versus palladium it's a darker richer silver so we all know that palladium is much more expensive than the white gold itself so with the palladium plating you're getting a look of palladium but it's actually white gold inside so if you're into Chanel like I am, you know that Chanel implements a lot of symbolism into her designs so the Coco Crush is actually, in Chanel's term, is an attitude, a spirit that says no to established path, no to rules, no to anything that restricts the joy of life, love, and creation. It is a free spirit. It embodies the spirit of Gabrielle Chanel, who borrowed the quilted motif from the equestrian world to satisfy her need for comfort at all times. So this is the Coco Crush ring that is the mini version. This is an 18 beige gold. It has 18 brilliant cut diamonds totaling 0.37 carats. But this one has the diamonds throughout. It's like an eternity band. And you can see the quilted patterns up close right here. As soon as the camera focus right here. Right there. Focus. There we go. Right there you can see the quilted pattern in between. It's very beautiful in terms of... I think Chanel has a pattern on this beige gold. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it's their equivalence to rose gold. So let's just give you a few comparisons compare. in terms of rose gold. This is rose gold from Hermes. And this is Chanel's beige gold. You can see the difference right here. So you can see this is the this CDC ring from Hermes. You see the difference right there. And here is Cartier's rose gold. see the difference to me Chanel's beige gold like the name says 
it has a less of a rosy copper tint to it it's more leaning toward the yellow gold aspect in terms of the coloring let me just put my glasses on to make sure but that's what i'm i'm reading but it's it's a very you know beautiful rose gold coloring as you can see right there and i'll give you a comparison in terms of you know my vca so this is my vca bracelet that's in rose gold right here you can see and just to compare just regular yellow gold to beige gold this is yellow versus the beige there as you can see and when you turn it this way you can see the grooves right here it has like um, the quilted edge from this end to this end so when you wear it in terms of you know my update in terms of like I think I had it almost for over a year now so there are scratches on them as this with any hardware in general there will be scratches on them the, uh, there's no way to avoid it if you're wearing it you're gonna have scratches on them now I I tried the one without the diamonds it just didn't like my fire <laughs> I'm sorry it didn't make my heart sing but when I had the diamonds on them I like them better so that's why I bought the diamonds one instead of the regular ones without the diamonds on them I think that's just more prettier with the diamonds but with being it with the diamonds I do take them off before I shower, when I do dishes, anything that requires labor. Even when I'm typing sometimes, I take them off and leave them on the side and I just type without, you know, my rings on. Oh, here's Louis Vuitton's rose gold. Let's just compare Louis Vuitton's rose gold versus Chanel's rose gold. Louis Vuitton's rose gold, I feel. So you must understand rose gold does not stay the color it initially is when you purchase it. It's going to get yellower because um, I think the rose gold fades or the, I'm not sure. It shouldn't fade because if it's, you know, combined mixed metal in terms of, yeah, the whole elements of, you know, copper and gold mixed together to get the rose gold color. So I went on to Google and, you know, specifically search what is rose gold made of. And it says rose gold is created when pure gold is mixed with silver and copper alloys. So there is actually silver in rose gold too, not just copper and gold itself. So I want you to be aware that where you get your rose gold, there is going to be a variance in terms of the degree of how the rose gold gold appears so each of the jewelry houses would have their own specific percentage that they create their rose gold version so for my collection VCA and Appel seems to have a darker richer rose gold compared to Cartier Cartier has less of a rosiness and then Hermes has the the least of the rosiness so you can look at each of the fashion houses to see which version of the rose gold that you like even with chanel here their rose gold is more beige versus you know rosiness so i also want to inform you that the rose gold seems to fade and how much it fades depends on the person who's wearing it and also the fashion house itself in terms of how the alloys are allocated in terms of you know what percentage of the silver versus copper versus pure gold is mixed together to make the rose gold so there is going to be a fading effect but each fading effect varies depending on how much you wear it and where you got the rose gold from um, so I don't bca rose gold right i had this more than a year it's it's been two or three years probably by now yeah the rosiness of it as you can see and you can see the beige gold so this is chanel louis vuitton hermes and bca 
just the popular ones or yeah here's so let's do the all three all five rose gold right here you can see so this is Chanel's beige gold Louis Vuitton rose gold Hermes rose gold Cartier rose gold and this is just regular VCA rose gold so just you know showing you the color variations and let's do with the color variations with the white gold so when we look at this Coco Crush ring, it is palladium plated. So you can see the different color in terms of, you know, the white gold versus this ring. This regular palladium ring right here, it's all 100% palladium. So it's very substantial in terms of, you know, the weight, even though the size is, you know, it's small, but it's very substantial. I have a few uh, palladium ring, but I don't wear them so much anymore because I sized them down to make them into pinky ring because I bought them a long time ago when I was in college. I was in, wanting to collect palladium and 24 karat gold the whole time. So I did manage, but I, I shrunk everything. So. so this is just regular palladium and this is palladium with white gold right here. You can see the color. Because this one is decades old, the darker the palladium is darker and if it, it's 100 palladium so you can see that it is a very darker grade versus this one the chanel palladium white gold with palladium covered it's more like um shinier versus this is more matte and because this is older too and if you compare chanel's white gold to my regular these are my few of my wedding bands right here. As you can see the white gold, it does change color too. I mean, I can go to the jewelry store and have it fixed and you know, polish and all the stuff and then it'll go back to white gold. But white gold in itself will change color like rose gold. Rose gold will change color into a lighter rose gold coloring. So it's more yellowish when it, it fades. And white gold, it turns yellowish when it fades too. But with the white gold, you can fix it if you go polish it at the jewelry store. But with the rose gold, once it's faded, I'm not sure how you can fix it. I guess you, they can put another cover on it if you really want it to. Not so much this one because it has diamonds on it. I'm not so sure about the Chanel beige gold because Chanel has a patent on this beige gold. I don't think they can dip it for you. So once you buy it and you wear it for a certain a certain time frame it is what it is so in terms of you know scratches there are scratches on both the rings more so the bigger ring than you know the smaller ring and the white gold does scratch more than the beige gold as far as i can see right here yeah i saw the other one so chanel has a few of the different variations in terms of the style for the Coco Crush so you can get the thin one right here or the thicker one right here and it comes in beige gold white gold and yellow gold I gold. so I tend to buy you know the, the rose gold or the white gold because not everybody buys those and I just tend to like to be a little bit different sometimes not all the time my clothing I try to wear things that you know blend me in <laughs> I don't want to stand out <laughs> but with my jewelry I do like to have you know a signature in terms of being different in my jewelry choices so that's why I chose these so again in terms of you know here's when you look at this one you can see the little grooves right here you can see it right here you can feel it definitely feel it so it's not like all flat there's like groove it's very comfortable to wear however i think you should do like maybe half a size up especially for the thicker ring because now i'm more hydrated because you know i'm trying to drink more water i noticed you know i do swell now because it's a thicker ring if you buy just half a size larger if you you know gain weight or lose weight there's still um you know a, f a very good chance that it'll still fit you so this one is it's a little bit big for me but you know i wanted it go to go through my knuckle so 
I suggest if when you're buying these ring to go in the store and try them on to see how comfortable they are. You know, I wouldn't use me as reference because, you know, all of us in terms of water intake are different, you know. So I can't give you my size and say, you know, I suggest you, you know, buy the size of your this finger. You know what I mean? Everybody's different. I might eat more salt and then I might drink more water or I might not drink more water. So I suggest for you, if you're looking to buy this ring, to, to go to the Chanel boutique and try it on. In terms of, you know, wear and tear, there are scratches. So there are a lot of hairline scratches on it, and but the diamonds are perfectly in place. None of them fell out. Just, you know, the wear and tear of it is the major factor is the scratches. That's just how it is with um, jewelry. Just on them. There's no way to avoid them. I do take my rings off when I wash dishes, when I do garden work or anything that requires labor they have because they have diamonds on them i just don't want the diamonds to fall off and because you know it's chanel <laughs> i don't, don't have as much scratches i think it's because i take them off when i do those things i suggest you do the same so in this session i'll go over the pros and cons for the coco crush ring so number one is the ring is very comfortable to wear. Two, the ring is an elegant ring style. Therefore, it will never go out of fashion in my opinion. Three, the cost per wear is low because you can wear it every day unlike handbags or fashion jewelry, except when you're doing labor, quote unquote. Four, you are investing into fine jewelry. Therefore, you can pass it down to the next generations. An heirloom piece. Five, there is no big Chanel logo, whereas the costume jewelries are dripping with the CC logo or big Chanel wording on them, which lends itself to a more refined jewelry piece. It's like a secret luxury language society where if you know, then you know it's Chanel. So the first con for this Coco Crush ring is the more you wear the ring, there will be more scratches to the surface of the ring. Two, the ring with the diamonds will cost more to maintain if the diamonds happen to fall out. Three, the ring doesn't keep its value. So the resale price for this ring is sometimes a little more than half the retail price. So if you're trying to resell this item, it's not a good investment. Unless you keep the ring for a very long time and throughout many price increases. So those are my pros and cons. So I want you to take away from this video that those are my opinion and my perspective. Also, I want to emphasize that everyone's wear and tear is going to be different because we take care of our jewelry differently. Also, I want you to keep in mind that each one of the ring is different in terms of how it was manufactured too. And I want you to do more research because this item is a very expensive purchase, at least in my opinion it is. I want you to really love the item so you don't have regrets after you purchase the item because, you know, you can't really return it after, you know, a certain time frame. And I don't want you to make a mistake. So to answer the question if the ring is worth it or not, it's very subjective because to me it is worth it because I purchased it and I love it. However, I want you to love it yourself. So I want you to do more research please and go to the boutique and just try it on. See if it makes your heart sing. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't. I would love to have you back. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.